here, please. Okay, I'd like to thank you for coming to listen to us today. It seems to be the only way that we are allowed to have our voice heard in this decision. Um, I was just wondering, this seems to be such a hot item, and so many people are um, either for it or against it. But why is it that the government is making this decision for us instead of being brought as a vote for the all of the American people? of the current system we have. Obviously, you know my position on this. This is a piece of legislation. It's going through Congress, which are your elected representatives. We have a republic. We don't have referendums. We, that's not at the federal level. You have them in Michigan. And we have those in Wisconsin. But we don't have an initiative and referendum system. We have a system where Congress writes the laws. And this is a bill moving through Congress. Now, I don't like the bill moving through Congress. I won't even get a chance to have my bill considered in Congress. Unfortunately, this is the bill that's going to be considered, and it is the way the system works. Um, let me say a, a point on what you originally said. Look, we're here at Craig. You know where I always do our town hall meetings in Janesville? I do them over in the city hall chambers. You know, some, I think the last time we had a full house, we usually get about 75 people in our Janesville town hall meetings. I mean, it's amazing. I, I'm just so impressed, enthused, excited that people are taking interest. I have people coming up with copies of this legislation with their own edits on it and highlighters and dog ears on it. People are getting involved and taking notice that's a good thing. So if you think you don't have a, a say in your government, well, you do. You're here talking with one of your employees of the government, one of your representatives. Public opinion matters. Public opinion changes things. You affect public opinion. Your presence here affects public opinion, not just here in Janesville, but, you know, people all around America. You can, you can affect public opinion. So I would argue that our system still does, uh, on, on whole, thrive on public opinion. Elections have consequences. The last elections gave uh, the Democratic Party a very big majority in the House, a very big majority in the Senate, some people like that, and a Democratic uh, president. They have the power to pass basically whatever they want to pass, so long as enough of them support it. And that is basically where they're headed right now. Um, over here. First of all, thank you for voting against the stimulus plan. Sure. Really, all I want to say is, how do we stop this, the speed of this bill going through. How do we stop this so we can, you know, stop, take a breath, look it over? Right now, it's a, it's like a train wreck. Yeah. I get this question a lot. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult question to answer because it's not an easy answer. Uh, this bill, I received its latest version at 11:57 p.m. the evening before I had to start voting on it at 8:30 a.m. the next day in my committee. Pretty big bill. Um, that's how a lot of the stimulus bill, same kind of situation, came to the floor. No, no human being could have read it in time before the vote. So how do you slow this down? Well, first of all, as I mentioned in the beginning, the original goal set up by the president and the leaders of Congress, this would have already been law by now. Why did this slow down? It slowed down in the, in the House because of one group of Democrats called Blue Dog Democrats slowed it down in the last week of July. I was supposed to vote on this the last Thursday or Friday of July before coming home here in James. I just live a half a mile or a mile that way. Before coming home for the August recess. The, it got slowed down because not enough Democrats wanted it to slow down so they had a chance to digest this bill, which we had just received and just came out of our committees. That's a good thing. How do you slow it down even further? Or how do you say stop this and start over? That's the question I get all the time. Um, I really think it comes down to that same pool of Democrats, Blue Dog Democrats. I, I don't know if you know what I mean when I say Blue Dog Democrats. Um, we don't have Blue Dogs in, in Wisconsin, meaning we don't have people in our delegation that consider themselves Blue Dogs. Um, they're traditionally moderate Southern Democrats, enough of whom who consider themselves Blue Dogs could, if they all voted against it, 
could stop this bill from passing. My count in July was that there were more than enough blue dogs to vote for this bill and pass it. So the question is, are those votes that in July were in favor of passing this bill, which was more than a majority to pass it, still where they are now that we've gone through August, we're going through August, people have listened to their constituents. I can only assume that town hall meetings around America are smashing the attendance records like they are with mine. Uh, Russ Feingold's the same. I can only assume that public opinion is, is, is bearing some, is, is having a difference. And so the question is, when we come back in September, when I'm supposed to vote on this in about a month, will those same votes that were there in July be there in September? And I don't know the answer to that, but it's a legitimate question. And that, I think, will determine the outcome of how fast or how slow or whether this thing passes or not.